All right, so for this video, we're gonna do Brandon Fraser. He is an American actor, and um, we're gonna see where he will be ranked. All right, so his rating is a 6.3. How rare is that? That is one in about 11.5 people. The percentage of people is a ninth percentile. His side facial score is very low at 28%. His front facial, front facial score is very high at 71%. The total facial harmony is 54%. His facial dimorphism is a five. His body fat factors is a nine. His miscellaneous features is a six. Tier, tier list is to the right side. Tier one is ideal. Tier two is near ideal. Tier three is normal. Tier four is a slight flaw. Tier five is a flaw. Tier six is a huge flaw. And tier seven breaks harmony. His overall facial assessment breakdown, his best features is to the left side. And we're gonna start from there. All right, so he does have exactly one with eyes apart. He has a vibrant eye color, lean face, wide jaw, very high cheekbones, and good hairline. His worst features is to the right side, and it is too much chin pro projection. Eyes are not deep set. Loose skin underneath the mandible, short philtrum, short and stubby nose, and facial convexity is too flat. All right, these are the rarity scores of other celebrities so you can compare. His facial dimorphism for males. We're looking at the male side since he's male and the check marks is the one that he does have. So uh, the neck width or a wide neck is careful tilt slash eye aspect ratio. He does have a dominant lower third, his browish inclination and his ramus length. Body fat factors is worth 25% of the overall score, and he does score exceptionally high for each one. His miscellaneous features is worth 15% of the overall score, and the ones that I checked off is the ones that he's kind of missing out on right now. So he does have forehead lines. He does have a little bit of asymmetry with the eyes and the skin quality. He does have, I think, like a little zip. All right, so the first measurement is the eye separation ratio. So this is the ESR, and it goes from the pupil distance relative to the width of his head or the cheekbone distance. And his is at 47.9%. Uh, and 47.9% is at the wider range, so he does have wider set eyes. But this is not too far from the ideal range, so he does get a tier two. His facial thirds is a tier one. Each third is evenly divided around 33%, so that is perfectly fine. He does have a great careful tilt at seven degrees. So seven degrees is very tilted. It makes the face look youthful and upturned. His facial width height of uh, FWHR. So how lengthy or how elongated is his facial features relative to the length or relative to the width of his head shape? And his is at two. So two is perfectly fine. It's within the middle of the distribution. And uh, yeah, so he does have somewhat of a compact face. His jaw frontal angle is a tier four at 101 degrees. So he does have a very wide jaw. This is gonna kind of look a little bit boxy like and you want it to be a little bit more sharper. His cheekbone height steadiness is a tier one at 98%. 98% is extremely, extremely high. I think this is the highest I've ever seen out of anybody, so yeah. His total facial height to width ratio is a tier three at 1.27. So this means that his head shape is a little bit on the shorter side. Anything more than this is gonna be a complete flaw, but this is not too bad. You just want your head, head shape to be a little bit more on the longer side. His bigonial width is a tier one at 91%. 91% isn't bad at all. It's still at the outside range, but anything more than this is gonna be a little bit uncanny. So you don't want that. So. Uh, anything that's more than this when it, in terms of uh, mouth width is going to be outside of that range but this is perfectly fine his chance of filtering ratio is a tier four so that is a slight flaw at three so that means that he does have a very short filtering like i said before for his flaws and he does have a long chin so if his filtering was a little bit longer and his chin was a little bit smaller it will kind of counterbalance each other and it will harmonize well with each other so that will have a perfect relationship with each other all right, so the neck width is 94%. 94% indicates that he does have an extremely wide neck. And uh, yeah, this is very uh, dimorphic and masculinizing. So if you have a wide neck, that is above 90%. 
that is perfect. His mouth to nose width ratio barely gets in at 1.38. Anything less than this will be outside of that ideal range that I mentioned before. And this is another way that you can tell that he does have wide set eyes is that the mouth width is actually supposed to be within the inner iris of the eyes. But on the left side of his mouth, that line that shoots straight up is actually supposed to be within the inner iris of the eyes, but his eyes kind of drift off to the left side a little bit. So that's how you know that he does have an, uh, a lazy eye too. So one eye is not, but the other eye is, so he does have a lazy eye. So his left eye, he does have a lazy eye. His mid face ratio is a tier five at 1.10. This says, or this indicates that he does have an extremely compact mid face. So for where a female can kind of get away with this and male cannot. So um, the fact that he does have this shows that um, this is more on the feminine side, but any, but like this type of measurement um, will show that he does have a very compact face and for males we do have more um wider set um mid face ratios or elongated mid face ratios more on the longer side so for him to have something this short uh indicates other things as well so if he did have a long field trim this will kind of counterbalance that his eyebrow steadiness is a tier 2 at 0 0.76 so this is not too bad um, preferably you want to have uh, eyebrows that are a little bit more closer, but um, this is uh, a little bit more on the closer side of things. And um, this is not, you know, anything that is um, indicates that is feminizing at all. And um, but, but, but preferably you do want eyebrows that are a little bit more closer set. His eye spacing, one eye test. So like I said, again, his eyes are one with his eyes apart and this is perfect. His eye aspect ratio is perfect as well. He does have almond shaped eyes that is desirable. His lower lip to upper lip ratio is also perfect as well at 1.54. So his upper lip is more smaller than his lower lip. Now he doesn't have that much lip protrusion or prominence. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys that one later. Um, his deviation from his ispilateral alien angle to his jaw frontal angle is only nine uh, degrees. Nine degrees uh, is um, pretty good. Um, preferably you want anything less than five degrees, but nine degrees is doable. His eyeball tilt is eight degrees. Eight degrees is perfectly fine. You do want upturned eyes, especially as a male, but neutral is just fine as well. But upturned eyebrows, anything past five uh, degrees is, per is where you want to be at. His bitemporal width, so how much forehead exposure does he have relative to the width of his face is at 85%. Uh, and anything less than this will get you outside of that ideal range. So um, he does have a kind of a narrow for forehead, but this is still perfectly fine for his face. His lower third proportions is a tier two at 90, uh, 29%. Uh, percent. And 29% um indicates that uh his upper portion of his lower third is just a tad bit small like i said with the field trim is if the field trim was just a little bit longer um i feel like his lower third would be perfectly fine his ispilateral alier angle is 92 degrees 92 degrees is perfectly fine and um that means that he doesn't um have a wide set eyes or i mean not wide set eyes um wide or orbits so uh, this is a way to indicate if you have a uh, very wide eye orbits and he does not have a uh, very wide uh, eye orbits. And yeah, his gonial angle is 131 um, degrees. 30, 131 degrees means that his gonial angle is very obtuse. And this is going to be a slight flaw. Of course, as a male, you want a gonial angle that is way sharper than this. And we're going to see why this is 131 degrees very soon. His nasal uh, frontal angle is 140 degrees. 140 degrees is obtuse, so he does not have a prominent brow region. It might seem like he does, but he actually does not have a prominent brow region. Now, he does have a little bit of brow bossing on top, but still, that's because he has an uh, inclined forehead, but not a prominent brow. The mandibular plane angle is at 8 degrees. And eight degrees means that he does have an extremely flat mandible. You want your mandible to have some sort of downswung. You want it to be downswung enough 
and this is not down swing enough it doesn't have any uh inclination and it's just too boxy like it's too flat this is one of the reasons why his frontal jaw angle is flat as well and this does attribute to that now i will also say that the reason why his gonio angle isn't ideal is because his ramus is booked back all the way back so if his ramus wasn't booked all the way back um his gonio angle will probably be within the ideal range so this is I mean, not the gonio angle, it's his ramus that is booked back. So if his ramus wasn't all the way booked back, then the gonio angle would be perfect. So the, the ramus is where majority of his inclination from his gonio angle is being applied. His ramus to mandible ratio is a tier one at 70 uh, percent. And 70 percent means that he does have an adequate size ramus for his mandible. And that is a perfect ratio. His facial convexity from the gabella is 176 degrees. 176 degrees means that he has a facial convexity that is on the flatter side, like I mentioned before, but this is still within the ideal range. Now we're gonna see his other facial convexity and see where that is gonna be at. Now his segment to curvicle angle is 119 degrees. 119 degrees is not ideal at all. And this can lead to different factors. I think he does have a high hyoid, and that is the bone underneath the, the jaw region where the neck is at. And I think he does have a little bit of submental fat underneath, or if not submental fat, I think that is loose skin, I believe. I think he ha does have a little bit of loose skin from the pictures that I've seen, and loose skin can attribute to this submental curvicle angle being more obtuse. His nasal facial angle is a tier five at 25 degrees. 25 degrees means that he does have a bad relationship between his chin and his nose. And the reason why I said that before is because he has too much chin projection as we're gonna see later on. His nasal labial angle is a tier one at 114 degrees. 114 degrees is perfectly fine. He does have an upturned nose. And another thing that attributes to this is that he doesn't have a lot of projection with his mouth. His mouth is not very projected as well. I'm gonna reveal that later on. And his lips is not as projected as well. as So that as well contributes to it. His orbital vector is neutral. He does have a little bit of a bug eye appearance. Like I said, again, he doesn't have a prominent brow region and he does have a neutral orbital vector. So that's the bone protrusion underneath the eye. So that's one of the reasons why he does have a little bit of a bug eye appearance. His total facial convexity is 149 degrees. 149 degrees means that he does have a very flat facial convexity. Now, the only difference between this and the facial convexity from the gabella is that this one includes a nasal protrusion as well. His mental labial angle is very, very tight at 104 degrees. An angle that is this tight is due to his chin being projected too much, so that is the reason why he does get a tier three. His facial convexity from the nasion is 172 degrees. 172 degrees isn't too bad. Is the only reason why this is slightly outside of that ideal range is because, like I said again, his facial convexity is just a bit too flat. If it's gonna be this flat, um, it's not gonna be ideal at all. And you want it to be a little bit more on the rounder side. So I feel like if his chin wasn't as projected, this would have been ideal. So his chin is single-handedly destroying a lot of his measurements. His nasal projection is a tier two. This is not too bad at all, but preferably you want at least 0 0.55. So that is the width of the nose divided by the, um, the nasal bridge of the nose. So if he did have a lower nasal bridge, this would have been perfect. Or if he did have a more projected nose or a longer nasal width, this would have harmonized better. His nasal width to higher projections, how lengthy is a nose he does have a, sh uh, a scrawny nose and a short nose you want to have more of a lengthy nose that would be better ideal for him and better suited for his face so he does have a very stubby nose his rickets e-line so this is going to be the rickets e-line it goes from the nasal tip down to the chin and preferably you want the lower lip to be closer to the line than the upper lip which it is the h line goes from the tip of the upper lip down to the chin and preferably you want that bottom lip to barely touch that barely touch the line and it barely touches the line so i give him a tier one for that as well the s line goes from the middle of the nose down to the chin and the upper lip and the bottom lip is actually supposed to touch that line or barely supposed to touch it and as you can see his upper lip and bottom lip does not touch that line which is kind of crazy um if his 
chin wasn't as projected in my opinion i feel like both of these lip measurements would have um or both of these lips would have touched that line so i feel like like that, like i said again his chin is single-handedly destroying a lot of his measurements his bristle line is uh to one the upper lip is actually slightly past the line more than the bottom lip so that is why that is at tier one his nasal mental angle is 138 degrees 138 degrees this, this pretty much shows the relationship between the na the nose and the chin and this is also relative to his facial convexity right so his nose and chin doesn't have a great relationship and he does have a flatter facial convexity so this is why this measurement is completely off and this is a little bit too high so this is a little bit too wide or a too obtuse of an angle his gonian to mouth relationship so his gonian bone is underneath the mouth line or it undercuts the mouth line and this is perfectly fine you do want your gonian bone to be below the mouth line to assess whether you have an adequate sized jaw for your face he does not have any recession for his mandible and he doesn't have any jaw recession so this indicates whether he have any jaw recession his jaw clearly passes the uh gabella and the nation and i guess his chin helps as well in this assessment his gonian to mouth relationship so oh i already did that my bad his brow ridge inclination is 13 degrees 13 degrees means that he does have a, a forehead that is inclined back and this is perfectly fine for a male and uh yeah his nasal tip angle is very very sharp at 114 degrees 114 degrees means that he does have an extremely extremely sharp nasal tip especially for a caucasian man i i hardly ever seen you know people with a nasal tip that is this sharp but this is still within the perfect range and um anything less than 112 degrees is going to be outside of that range so yeah his lower lip to submental curvical plane and the his is at 104 degrees this is perfectly fine now this kind of counterbalances with each other because like i said again he has a very projected chin and his lips are not very projected as i will show y'all later on but he does have a lot of loose skin so his loose skin is not his loose skin is affecting the measurement but his chin to lips is counteracting that measure that measurement right so it's kind of so this is still within the ideal range but if he didn't have uh, a very projected chin this would have been a flaw but it kind of counterbalances each other out but for all the way around this measurement is very this measurement is perfect his inferior third of his face slash lower third of the facial proportions so this is another way of measuring your lower third proportions his is at 0.42 this is this is slightly off and the reason why it's slightly off again is like i said again he does have a very short filtrum but his lip measurements are, are perfectly fine now if his filtrum like i said again it was just a tad bit longer this would have been within the ideal range so yeah his s2 line is a way of indicating whether you do have a malocclusion he does have an s2 malocclusion let me see yep an s2 skeletal malocclusion so this indicates that he does have an overbite and the reason why he does have an overbite is because his upper lip is fit more than 50 percent of his lower lip and this is one of the ways that you can indicate whether you do have an overbite or not and uh yeah so he does have an overbite a slight overbite so yeah and you do not want to have an overbite because that means that the upper teeth is way past the lower teeth. All right, so the Z angle is the last measurement that I'm going to do today. And his is at 88 degrees. And 88 degrees, so anything past 80 degrees means that you do have lips that are not projected enough and a mouth that is not projected enough for your face. Now, if yours is lower than 70 degrees, what that indicates means that you do have lips and a mouth that is too overly projected. So preferably you want to have lips that are not too projected, but not too um, recessed. You want it to have that nice little balance. You want it to be within that nice little range. So that that's it for this video. If you want me to do your face, make sure to email me and make sure to DM me. And I'm out, guys. Peace.